This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Uh, hello friends. In this video, I'll be trying to answer this important question. What is the right plane of emulsification of the nucleus and how do we achieve this? I have chosen this case uh, which has a slightly smaller pupil which will help me to demonstrate the answer in a better way. So here we have an elderly lady with a hard brunescent cataract with pseudo exfoliation and this is the maximum pupillary dilatation which could be achieved. At this point, I'm not sure about the health of the zonules. Although we can perform fake emulsification of this cataract uh, with this sized pupil, uh, since I was not sure about the zonular health, I decided to stretch the pupil and use BHEX ring for maintaining the pupillary dilatation which would help me to deal with any intraoperative capsular zonular issues if and when they arise. The moment I puncture the capsule will let me know whether the zonules are healthy or no. Well, the zonules in this case looks alright as I can tear the capsule quite easily. I'm trying to make a bigger rexus and I'm able to do it quite easily because in a hard nuclear cataract, these cataracts offer a perfect base to perform the rexus of a desirable size. Now hydrodissection is performed and I just nudge the nucleus and it's confirmed that the nucleus is free from all capsular attachments. Now moving on to the nucleus management. My typical strategy in such eyes with dense nuclear cataract is to first create a central deep trench before proceeding to chop. I have created a trench of about 70% depth. Now this groove is going to give me a nice grip to hold the nucleus for performing the vertical chop. I've changed my settings to the chop mode. I'm using only longitudinal FACO in burst mode along with high vacuum. The initial burst of energy allows me to bury my tip deep into the substance of the nucleus and then my sharp chopper moves vertically down and then laterally at progressively deeper planes. The crack of the posterior plate is initiated but it hasn't traversed the entire length. No problem with that. But the key is to continue dividing. The nucleus is rotated, the tip is buried deep, and the vertical chop is performed followed by lateral separation. The grip of the tip gets loosened during lateral separation. A short burst of energy re-engages the nucleus. The lateral separation maneuvers at deeper planes ensure that the complete division has occurred. Similar maneuver, bury, chop, and then laterally separate. My right hand is steady, my left hand with the chopper is being placed at progressively deeper planes to achieve complete division. Being slow, steady and persistent is the key. Now I want to remove a couple of these fragments out to create more space in the bag. My settings are changed. Now I'm using only continuous torsional with high flow and vacuum. Please note that the fragments are being emulsified at the pupillary plane and the chopper is placed above the fragment during emulsifying. Now the second heminucleus needs to be divided. The tip is buried deep up to the sleeve to ensure better grip before performing the vertical chop and then the lateral separation maneuvers. I am emulsifying this loose fragment now. I can see that this fragment has moved up slightly above the pupillary plane. It was slightly more closer to the coronal endothelium and also there is significant amount of lens chatter which is clearly appreciated in the slow motion clip. And also note that the plane of emulsification is quite anterior. I am refilling the anterior chamber with dispersive OVD first followed by a HPMC underneath it. The last big fragment needs to be divided first but since the bag is empty, lateral separation is slightly difficult and not very effective. So I just flip the two pieces upside down and fake with the part which is holding them together. 
That was easy, right? The first fragment is then emulsified. Now let us observe the emulsification of this fragment in the slow motion clip. I am holding the tip in that center with bevel turned to one side. Now one can see that the fragment being emulsified is below the pupillary plane. The chopper is held just above the phaco tip. It's acting like a guard preventing any small lens particle flying anteriorly and hitting the cornea. I think the key is to control the energy delivery so that it's never too much for the fragment to burst out into small multiple fragments which can then fly around uncontrolled. Now moving on to the last fragment. Ovid is again put inside the chamber. The fragment is engaged onto the tip. All the maneuvers are being done at the pupillary plane. Since the pupil is small, in this case, we can appreciate that the nucleus fragment is dancing around the phaco tip, but most of it is happening behind the pupillary margin. Since my chopper is held very close to the phaco tip, occasionally it does touch the phaco tip. We can hear this screeching sound occasionally. Well, the only secret to control the plane of emulsification is to slow down the speed of emulsification. By controlling the energy delivery of the, by the foot control, we can slow down the speed and this will ensure that the fragment will always be sticking onto the tip, dancing around it. And this, in turn, will ensure emulsification of the fragment at a much posterior plane, resulting in minimal trauma to the endothelium. So to answer the question, what is the ideal plane of emulsification of the nucleus? Well, it has to be at or below the pupillary plane in most case scenarios. And how can we achieve this? This is possible by regulating the amount of energy used to emulsify the fragment. And typically this is done with the surgeon using his foot to control the amount of energy which is being delivered. Let me rewind and show these two clips in slow motion. Here the emulsification is happening in an uncontrolled manner, causing the fragment to burst open and the tiny debris flying around everywhere. On the contrary, this is a scenario where the entire process is very well controlled. The energy used is much less. Of course, it has slowed down the entire procedure, but the nuclear fragment is just dancing around the tip gracefully before diminishing in size and then vanishing. It's quite pleasant to watch this and I can bet that the cornea also like this technique a lot. We always will find a happy and smiling cornea the next day if we perform emulsification the right plane by using the right amount of energy. Thank you for watching and hope this helps.